Welcome to the Global Fluency Podcast. This is a space we've created to explore the components of diversity, inclusion, and cultural competency. Cultural competency. And all of the ways in which these components present themselves in our professional and personal lives. Be it language, culture, socioeconomic class, gender, race, ability level, age, or so many other identifiers. Everything begins with a conversation. conversation. Join us in this space where we seek to empower, educate, and uplift by creating authentic conversations on issues that affect us every day in every way. We look forward to you joining us in our discussions with everyone from thought leaders, diversity and inclusion strategists, students to CEOs in the corporate, education, and nonprofit sectors. Let's discuss how we can better understand differences and learn leverage commonalities. Let's do away with political correctness, explore ideation, build community, and create allies. Let's start an authentic conversation. This is the Global Fluency Podcast, and this is Bertine Crevacore West. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Global Fluency Podcast. My name is Bertine Crevacore West, and I'm delighted to be your host today. I'm also delighted to have with me special guest, Michelle O'Neill. Michelle, would you say hello to our listeners? Hello there, everyone. And I am so honored to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. I've been looking forward to having you on. And so now I want to tell our guest a little bit about you. So Michelle is the founder of Mastering Your Monday. It's a lifestyle enrichment firm that was inspired by a desire to help women overcome personal and professional challenges both in the workplace and at home. Michelle felt a drastic need to help her sisters combat feelings of being overwhelmed, overcommitted, and underappreciated that so many of us hardworking, powerful women express. Feelings of being stuck often lead to stress-related illnesses, discontentment, and feelings of inadequacy in our ability to handle the pressures of daily life. She specializes in assisting these women in developing a more balanced, productive lifestyle. She helps them create the control they desire and orchestrate that pivotal fresh start one Monday at a time so that they can concentrate on the things and people that matter most in their lives. She valiantly served her country and is a retired United States Air Force veteran who brings with her many of the skills and expertise that she garnished in the military as well as other life experiences to formulate the signature technique that she uses today to help others. She's had to overcome some of her own challenges and through her faith, discipline, and strong values, she's been able to develop the resiliency necessary to prevail. Believe me, her being here today is a testimony to you, and it shows that you too can win with the right guidance, support, and mastery. Michelle, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Once again, welcome to the Global Fluency Podcast. We're delighted to have you here. Woohoo! Thank you. I love that, especially, you know, if someone's listening to this on a Monday, they need that woohoo. And I thought, what a wonderful, wonderful way to to structure your company, uh, one Monday at a time, because we normally see Mondays as the beginning of something new, right? Not only the week, but a chance to create, a chance to refresh, a chance to pivot something that we're trying to do. So absolutely. In addition to that, I'm, I didn't even know that you were a veteran and you are so many things. You're a mom, you're a wife, you're a veteran, you're a grandma, which if you guys see, if you could see the video, you would not believe Michelle is a grandma at all. <laughs> I think you should be carded, but I am so glad to see you on this show to represent so many aspects of what being a woman is, right? Because we play many, many different roles. And so knowing that, I am certain that that comes with overwhelm. You know, I've experienced it and countless listeners um, on today's episode have experienced it. So I'm delighted that you're here to share your experience and your guidance and expertise with us. Absolutely. I am looking so forward to getting down to the nitty gritty. (laughs) Well, let's hop to it then. Let's hop to it. So tell us, I've told our audience a little bit about you, but tell us a bit more about your professional background, your training and your company. What propelled you to do this work? Well, a lot of, a a lot of it has to do with my military background. Um, I'm just not military myself, but my father was military too. So I've been around the military all my life and I kind of understand the ins and outs of the military and the thought process of the military, very strategic, very regimen. And also 
allows you to be creative because you have to think of things when things don't go the way they normally would. So I have that background. And then along with that, of course, I'm a certified life coach. And just the things I've learned along the way in the military. And then, of course, I work for our government as a civil servant. So I bring a lot of actual experience with me as long as as well as learned experience. I really believe that you use every opportunity to learn and grow. And then in the military, I found that one of my biggest struggles, because I was with a male-dominated profession when I first came in, I was actually an electrician. And being in that male-dominated profession, actually, my biggest struggle was with the one other female colleague that I had. No way. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it was all because she was trying to prove she was just as good as any of the guys. I'm just as good. I can do what you want to do. And with that, she was taking safety, you know, not taking the safety precautions that she needed to take to prove that her value. So understanding that the risks that we take as females to prove ourselves, to show our worth, to show our value really stuck in the back of my mind. Wow. And I know that resonates with so many of us, even though it still surprises me that this continues to happen. You know, when we get to, in my instance, it's corporate America and some of the people that I worked with that gave me the most grief, honestly, as a young person trying to come up and, and do my work, were women. And it surprised me. And it taught me a lesson that um, sisterhood and solidarity matter, right? Yes, and so absolutely. I always said, when I was in a position to help somebody along, I wanted to make sure that I did that. And I, I wanted to never forget how I felt when somebody who was of my gender decided to not help me right? And, and that help can come in many forms, right? It can be something as simple as a good morning, how are you, right? Because how many times do we need just that, right? Or exactly. are you okay, right? Oh, wow. I love that. I love that. So tell us a bit about your experiences with diversity and inclusion and, and that journey. Well, as I said, my father was in the military and, uh, and, I, and, and myself, my husband and my daughter. So with all that said, I have spent most of my life overseas and not only overseas, but in the Asia er side of overseas. I grew up in the Philippines. I spent at least eight years. So my young years and then my high school years were all in the Philippines. Wow. And then uh, in between those two areas, I spent two years over in Greece, Crete, Greece. I'm an island girl. I keep getting on these islands. Here we go. The Philippines, Crete, Greece. And then when I went into the military, one of the first places that I went was Okinawa, Japan, another island. And with my husband, I ended up in mainland Japan, the last island. So I'm always on an island. I'm the island girl. But with that said, you learn one of the first things my mother taught me was immerse yourself in the culture that you're living in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was never, we never stayed on base. We always, I mean, we lived on base, but you know how some military, they go to a base and all they deal with are the people on base. Yes. We would always immerse ourselves, no matter where we were in the country that we were in. We would learn the language. We would associate with the people mm-hmm. and make them a big part of our lives. And so we would be down in the marketplace, hearing the language, smelling the foods, all that aspect of the culture. So the things I took away from that was immerse yourself in the environment, learn the language. It is so important. It's a courtesy. It's a courtesy to the people whose whose country that you are in. You know, so many people take the time to learn English Mm -hmm. and, and to learn how to have those conversations to us, to communicate with us. Why can't we give that same love and generosity to them? So, and then the final thing is curiosity. Always be curious about other people's culture because it shows that you really care. Just sometimes walking in a store and saying hello in their language, you know, think on it there. How are you? Saying how are you? It's just watch their eyes light up because you've taken the time. Learn their dances. Oh, they have a native dance. Learn their dances. Learn their 
a song. I would always learn a song in whatever language of whatever country I was in. I'd learn one of the native dances. But just the way that you're viewed after this, the way that you're um, perceived is totally different. And it's so welcoming to whatever culture you're in. We've got some exciting news here at the Global Fluency Podcast. As your safety and continued learning remains our top priority, the 2020 Global Fluency Diversity and Inclusion Summit has gone virtual. The Global Fluency Podcast and Westbridge Solutions continue to see this as a time for growth and evolution. Take this opportunity to come join us virtually for our 2020 summit from the comfort of your own home. Going virtual has allowed us to offer all summit attendees tons of additional perks. When you register for the summit, you will receive access to all 12 of our key speakers during this live two-day summit. No need to choose breakout sessions. 30-day access to the replay of the summit with closed captions. Eligibility for SHRM, CCHI, NBCMI, and LPCA CEU credits. And for nonprofit organizations and interpreters, you will receive a special discount when you use code GF202045. Don't delay. Register today at www.globalfluencysummit.com. We look forward to seeing you at the virtual event. I love that you said that. There are so many gems in there, Michelle. And off air, we were talking about intellectual curiosity, right? And so what what I'm hearing now from you is cultural curiosity, right? Coupled with that. And I always tell people as well, as somebody that, that's multilingual, I tell people, if you're going to go visit a place, learn how to say hello and thank you, right? And what you were saying, you took me on a journey kind of through just memories that I've had of, of when I've traveled and, or even here at home, you know, and you said something to someone in their language. And what did Nelson Mandela say? If you speak to a man in language, he understands you're speaking, and I'm paraphrasing, but if you speak to his language, you're speaking to his heart, right? And I always think that is where we should aim first, aim to speak to someone's heart. And especially as a child of immigrants, my parents speak, well, spoke perfect English and they had to learn that. And, and they were diligent about doing that because they were coming to a place where that was the language. And I, I always get surprised when people travel abroad and expect people to speak English. Oh my gosh. Like, nope. Why should they? <laughs> you know, why should they? Even if they are, you know, multilingual, bilingual, you're visiting their country. So why shouldn't you at least make that effort? You know, so what you said really resonated with me. And, and I'll tell you this, I don't know um, how many times this has happened to you, but I remember I went to, I was invited to speak um, at an event at um, the Korean Association that's very large here in our community. And so there were some other speakers as well who had gone before me and everybody was just speaking in English, which was fine because everybody was bilingual there. So that was fine, except for us guests who did not speak Korean. And so as I got up, um, there was an interpreter there as well, but I made sure prior to going that I learned how to say hello, everyone. And by the end of my speech, thank you. And you know what totally surprised me? When I said, you know, the greeting in Korean, everybody started clapping and smiling. And it yes. was like, what a wonderful, I didn't even expect the, the applause, quite honestly. You know, I was like, okay, maybe some people will feel, oh, that's nice. But it was such a wonderful, just wave of, of just joy. And they that feel is, valued. They, they feel did. valued. Oh my gosh. There are two things that when you were talking, I want to, a lot of people don't understand in Japan, one of the things, I taught English over in Japan. And one of the things I realized, their children, five years old, are learning four languages because the Japanese language alone, mm -hmm. I think is three or four, is katakana, hiragana, and kanji. So they have to learn those. And then they learn English. Oh my goodness. They have tutors. They're going to school to eight, nine o'clock at night. And usually it's that time, the later time after the normal school time that they're learning all these languages and, and English is one of them. 
And then the other thing that I did, because in the military, I was my final job, the one I love the most, was I was a vocalist for the Air Force Band. Oh, my and goodness. And every, every country that I went to, I would learn their national anthem in their language and oh, be able to that. sing it. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, a lot of times that would allow me to be at their events and sing their anthem for them. So, you know, we have to, we are not the only people in the world, regardless of what you think. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be inclusive. We have to be a part of the world. I love that. I love that. And what a beautiful sight that would be to, to see people who are not of your country, right? Not of your nationality or ethnicity, and you are all singing the same song, right? I think that's a beautiful, beautiful picture and really paints the mosaic of what our world could be. Yes. I I definitely think that. So let me ask you this. With regard to cultural confidence, you know, what goals has this helped you establish in your work? It has helped me a lot to, uh, one of the things I do is because I've been overseas and in so many different cultures, is I seek to understand the reason for a person's action. A lot of times it's culturally driven or, or environmentally driven. And if we don't know that, we're, we're working off of our culture and our understanding. And a lot of times we take things wrong or not in the intended way because we don't understand that they're coming from a different way too. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I always do is to seek to understand, especially if I know you're from a different culture, is to get to know a little bit more about your culture and your family life and why you're thinking that way or why are you doing. And the other thing is giving me is patience to the difference of, of other cultures and, and the teachings that they've gotten. And so it gives me patience when I'm teaching them also to understand, even within the United States, different dialects coming from the north and the south the things we see we say and um are different like a hoagie versus a sub sandwich or a pop versus a coke so when we go to a different area we're talking two different languages absolutely. and so absolutely so if you understand that the way you're saying things the, the things you say are different and that's the issue we have even with our um SAT tests and things because it's built for one specific culture. Mm -hmm. So the underlying cultures or the outlying cultures don't even know what you're saying or don't understand the intent behind the questions. And then the other thing it's given me is an openness to learn and experience other people and their cultures. And it helps me validate their work because they know they matter. They know I care. And it also gives me a creativity, the ability to think in my mind and be creative on how I approach them and other things. Wow, just so many gems from that. So many gems. And I love that you mentioned being creative, right? Because I think sometimes in our society, as as we are so fast paced, things are moving, you know, at rapid speed, we expect, you know, immediate feedback for things, you know, there's that element of patience is sometimes absent, right? And I think within that element of patience, that's an opportunity for us to be creative. And I think we miss the mark sometimes because we're always rushing, rushing, rushing. And so with that rush, we're going to pivot to talking about Fifty Shades of No, because in our collective desire to rush and get things done and multitask and this and this, we tend to take on, especially women, too many things that for us to handle effectively, Right. Um, because we, we all have that song in our head. We're every woman. It's all in us. Right. Shout out to Shaka Khan. <laughs> you know, but we, we all have that 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 we're programmed to be this way. Right. I think we're programmed to be this way. But that is oftentimes to our detriment. Right. So exactly. tell me about the 50 shades of no. And what does that mean to you? So really, the 50 shades of no is. There are different ways of approaching no, that we don't always have to feel that we have to say that one word. So we have to, in ourselves, develop how best we can say no. I can't tell you what no works for you. Hmm. Just like you can't, you can't tell me how, you know, my personality, I just say no, 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 no. 
but <laughs> but everyone doesn't have that boldness or you know right. mm-hmm. and so we have to find out ways of saying no and even for me depending on who you're talking to or or the relationship you have with that person there's a way of saying no so that's that's where we get the 50 shades just like the colors in your crayon crayon box mm-hmm. there's so many shades of variation of each color Now we would like to take a moment to thank our sponsor. Westbridge Solutions is a professional training company focusing on diversity, inclusion, cultural competence, and soft skills trainings. Westbridge Solutions offers a variety of innovative training courses, both in-person and online, live and self-paced. Their clients include corporations, government organizations, healthcare organizations, the nonprofit sector, universities, and individuals such as yourself. Through their rigorous training programs, trainees learn to understand differences, leverage commonalities, and achieve organizational, professional, and personal actualization. To learn more about Westbridge Solutions, please feel free to visit their website at www.westgrouptraining.com or follow them on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Westbridge Solutions, empowering professionals for success. I love that. And the title had been so intriguing to me um, when I first saw that. I was like, the 50 shades of no. I want to delve deeper into that. because, But now I see what you mean by that, right? Um, because it has to do with our personality, our culture, right? Our work environment, where exactly, you know, the people we surround ourselves with. Um, and, and I definitely like that. I say this, uh, there, Warren Buffett had said something, and again, I'm going to paraphrase where he said that, you know, he says no to what, 90% of things, right? And I realized like in my business and in in my world that I became a better professional when I started to say no more, right? Because then what that did was align me truly. Well, first it provided me with clarity, right? As to what Mm -hmm. I wanted to do and when, but it aligned me with my true purpose and my mission. And so the other day I was having this conversation um, with a friend because I was talking to her about the show and thinking about this in my head. And so I was just like, you know, it's very interesting how we become yes people just because we, you know, by sheer virtue of what's expected of us from society as women in particular, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, people expect us to always be ready to be the caretaker, the this, the that, and especially during now with COVID and quarantining and, you know, women in particular taking on multiple roles of not only corporate professional, professional speaker, author, you know, um, now it has to be teacher, you know, cafeteria person, um, you know, librarian, all of these other things. And so how do we draw those healthy boundaries? Right. And so when do we say no? And, and how does, how does that work in your world with your work? Well, there's no right. First of all, 50 shades, people say there's no right and wrong way to say uh, no. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have to remember that there's no. But the thing is that you can say no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that that's a freedom, a permission that you need to give yourself. Mm -hmm. I can say no. Everybody repeat after me. No, just kidding. Do it. it. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) But with that said, the the other thing is we have to know our non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. We have to know what we will not allow. And that's your boundary. That's your guideline. That's your limit, mm-hmm. you know. And so you have to, I mean, literally write it down. What are things that I will not accept? You will not call me out of my name. I don't care who you are. But you will not treat me that way. I will not allow it. Conversation is over. You will not disrespect me. Because when you're doing this, you're allowing people to know where you end and where they begin. So you have to create that that boundary in your life, knowing you're non-negotiable. So how do you bring 50 Shades of No to Mastering Your Monday? How How do those two mesh and meet? Well, for most of us, it is a fresh start. Just learning to say no. 
Simple yeah. as that. Mm-hmm. And we have to take small steps. What am I going to do this what this week? What am I going to do to start incorporating this in my life? How can I make this work for me this week? So you choose one thing, one thing that you're going to institute oh, in your family life. Let's say it's your family life. You know what? I'm not doing everyone's laundry anymore this week. Okay. So mom, can you wash my, no. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to play this episode out loud for the entire neighborhood, just so they know. <laughs> but, but the, and then here's how you say no with grace. Yes. But I will teach you. Absolutely. Let me show you how to do it so you can do it the next time. And you, the win, always have a win. And then you can be just as good as mommy at doing it. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I love that. So how would that translate into your professional life? What's a non-negotiable that you set for yourself? Easy, easy. Hey, what did that email say? Did you read it? Mm. No, read it. Wow. I'll talk to you about that email after it. Did you read it? I'm not going to do your work for you. I love it. I love it. And then there's that uncomfortable silence that needs to happen, right? Absolutely. Because you had me wanting to check my email and be like, did she send me an email? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, absolutely. And you know, that resonates with me, especially because I had a potential client and for some reason they needed to have many phone calls with me prior to, mind you, they came to me to secure my company services. And I understand, you know, you have to do your due diligence and all of that. And, and we did ours on our end. So by the first phone call, we were ready. We knew what they needed. We, we had everything planned out for them. And it took five more phone calls for them to decide that they were willing to go with us. And in hindsight, the lesson that I learned from that was to set my no, because that was time. Most of those calls were redundant. And that was time wasted on my part and the part of my team. And now, because of that, right, I have three phone calls max. Because if you need that from me, three phone calls max for a very specific period of time, right? So you helped me with that 50 shades of no right there. Um, Because I thought to myself, one of those phone calls was literally having the email that the representative sent. And he's asking me, okay, so let's go over the email. And literally I'm reading out my answers to the email. And I'm thinking while I'm doing this, there are a thousand more productive things I'd rather be doing. Exactly. And and it was just a simple thing of saying, no, um, I sent the email. Why don't you let me know any questions that you have in reference to the email? You're making me laugh so much with that because I know people are listening that are having that epiphanous moment. That's like, yes, aha, that is what I was feeling. That is what I was going through, right? Another good one. You have an office or a cubicle or whatever. And there's a person that always want to stop by or your kid always want to come into the room Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. One, if you're at home, do not disturb me during office hours. Look, mommy put the office hours on the door. When the door is closed and the office hour is there, do not disturb me. Mama, no, no. Talk to me at the end of the day. We can talk. Same thing at office. They come. I'm working right now during such and such and such and such time. Do not disturb me. Or when my door is closed, do not open the door, whatever it is. But you have to set those boundaries and then you have to be willing to stand on it with the no. The no is your stand. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you said that. So now we're going to wrap up, but I want you to tell, well, tell our listeners What two things would you like to impart upon our listeners? Always know, this is just a given and I've already said it. Know your Mm non-negotiables. Simple, easy. You've got to know them up front. And then as you learn along the way, you can put new ones in place, but you're learning. But on top of that, the second thing, be willing to stand firm on your decisions and dish out the consequences. 
Oh, yes. We've got to use the word consequences, right? Because every decision that we make does have a consequence. Absolutely. So you have to be willing to give those consequences to the disregard of your no. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Michelle, thank you for sharing your wisdom, your expertise, and the power of no with our audience today and with me. So I want you to tell our listeners, where can they find you and connect with you on social media? Where can they learn more about Mastering Your Monday? How do they get in touch with you? Absolutely. Well, on social media, it's easy. You can find me everywhere by knowing my name, Michelle O'Neill. So I'm at Michelle O'Neill and it's the funny spelling of Michelle. So just make sure you check that out. And always find me on MasteringYourMonday.com. So there you have anything you need or how to get in contact with me there. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Michelle. And so our listeners out there, remember, know your non-negotiables and really follow up with the consequences for not having those non-negotiables met or if someone tries to violate those. So Michelle, once again, on behalf of the Global Fluency Podcast and our listeners, thank you so much for being a part of today's show. It was such a pleasure having you here. And thank you for having me on. It was an honor. And so everyone, remember at Global Fluency Podcast, this is your podcast. Make sure you follow us on our Facebook page, leave us comments. And for those um, that want to see uh, the transcripts of this, you can find us on our YouTube channel at Westbridge Solutions as well. So remember, let's keep the conversation going. I'm Bertine Kremacore Wes, and I've been delighted to be your host. Until next time. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Global Fluency Podcast. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. for our latest episode. Connect with us on our social media. You can find us on Facebook at Global Fluency Podcast and on Instagram at Westbridge Solutions, LLC. Global Fluency Podcast. Understanding differences. Leveraging commonalities. Let's keep the conversation going. Going.